uh, right. Now, look, the movie Woman King, it could be cinematically, it could look good and um, the pacing and the tone and the, the screenplay could be good. But we do have to understand the, the certain messages that's being portrayed with movies like that. We still, we can't lose the message. We can't lose the overall message. Because look, there are television shows that have pretty good storylines that I won't even watch. I, I, I won't watch. Like, for example, my, my lady likes, she likes watching the P-Valley show. And I'm, I'm so cool because the show, it ambushes you with bullshit. The storyline is good. It's about some strippers at a strip club or whatever. And you watch and you see them strippers. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, I'm looking at these women, booty shaking. That's cool. The storyline gets cool. They get into some gangster shit. All right, this is this is a cool little storyline. I'm watching Pete Valley. I'm like, this ain't bad. All right. Cool storyline. Nice looking women in here. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, niggas be doing a drug deal. Like, hey, man, where's my drug? I don't know. Well, bend over, nigga. And then they start doing each other. I'm like, whoa. 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 Where the hell did that come from? And they always do it spontaneously because they 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 know that if there's a buildup to it, you're going to tune out. So they have to do it real fast. Power starts doing that stuff. I don't like when Power does that. The, the, the Power TV show on stars, they ambush you with the bullshit. You going along with the story. The story is good. The story is good. Everything is good. Everything is cool. Then all of a sudden... Bam, two niggas kissing for no reason. Like, what the fuck, what the fuck, what? And just crowbar that in. Like with the the, the men and the women, they, they at least create a sexual tension there. There's a sexual tension. You see them kind of flirting. The, the Tariq character's flirting with this chick, and, you know, it's a buildup to it. The, the, the one dude was flirting with the teacher. So there's a buildup. You see that it, it might go there, but they don't do that with the dudes. You, they just cut to a scene, the niggas bent over. Okay, what the hell? This ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, I don't want to be ambushed with something. I don't want to be ambushed. But they have to ambush you with, with certain agendas, and that's what I don't want. So even if the storyline is good, I don't want to be ambushed with an agenda. And going back to The Woman King, there's agendas with that movie. There's a lot of agendas with that movie. You dig? So we have to watch out for that stuff. We have to understand programming when people are trying to convey messages. This is why we need to understand history. See, uh, the dominant society, you see how they've been acting over the mermaid, and the mermaid is a fictional character. They're mad because the mermaid is black now. And that's a fictional character, you see? And they're pissed off. They, they don't play that stuff when it comes to their, their iconic imagery, even if it's fictional. Just like with the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is all fiction. But when they did a black version in 1978 with the movie The Wiz, that movie flopped because white people were like, hell no. Don't you do that to our iconic films. Don't you nigger it up. And The Wiz was a phenomenal movie. It's a classic in black society. But white society was like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't touch our stuff. Now, we can go and remix all of your stuff but you can't touch ours all right mela mila you you want to try it again dear what's up mila can you guys hear me now we can hear okay, you great. can you hear yes yes perfectly right. okay um hello afternoon i'm in the dominican republic so the surface is bad so i'll just speak very quickly people in general okay. i okay. feel need to be extremely aware of the things that they intake for sure and as you said Tariq, um they use these sneaky tactics but in addition Women might want to realize that these powerful independent positions that they are slowly conditioning us to want isn't what we naturally desire for the most part. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, are you Dominican? No, I'm not Dominican. I'm from the British Virgin Islands. Oh, I see. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay, well, you be safe. Yeah. All right. Let me get my brother Torian Rain in here. Let me get him in. T Torain Walk. I'm sorry. Torain Walk. Torain in here. What's up, brother Torain? Brother Terrain, where you at, bro? How are you? 
I'm good, man. What's on your mind, sir? All right, man. First of all, man, much respect to the things you're doing. I just want to say that. And the, thank you so much. The second thing I want to say is, I'm to your point. We have to be very, very, very careful about the optics that we consume. And we also have to understand that a lot of the stuff that you're talking about and the things that we're pushing back against, they come from academia and they come from entertainment. And these ideas are not coming from us, but they're being filtered down to us through black academics and black people in the entertainment industry. And, yes. and, and yeah, and you feel me? And the reason this is happening is because these people don't really have the ear of black people. They have the ear of the white power structure and they don't connect with black people. That's why you get a lot of whack cornball shows that you see on TV and on streaming services and they call it black entertainment. That's why you have a lot of mm -hmm. white music coming through. And that's why you have a lot of people in positions who are black who don't really have the best interests of black people at heart. And then one last thing, and then I'll wrap it up with this. Mm -hmm. The reason these people have to understand that these people who have the mic do not represent the majority of black people. They just happen to be in positions where they get a lot of visibility and they get a lot of access because they're feeling they're they're, pu they're pushing forth an agenda that the power structure wants to get pushed across. Like I said, a lot of these people like Kareem, who's the spokesperson, who's the White House spokesperson, people like Meghan Markle, this whole thing about like the entertainment with the Little Mermaid. All these people who promote this stuff are projecting what they want to see and they want to call it representation. It's representation for them because a lot of these people are not did not grow up around black people. So anything, right. anything that looks like them, anything with a brown skin, they're going to co-sign without thinking about the detrimental effects it has with people outside of their little circle. And that's all I wanted to say. Just people need to be aware of that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Real good information, brother. Man. But yeah, we just got to be careful because of the images that we see. We got to be really, really careful. Where are my Atlanta people, man? I'm out here. Like I said earlier, I'm in Atlanta. I want to go. I want to go get some some clothes, but I do not know where to go. Um, you know what I need? I need a driving service. Y'all y'all can recommend a driving service to me out here. Not just Uber and all of that stuff. Need a driving service so that I can kind of jump from place to place to place to check out different spots because I, I don't want to be out here. I don't like waiting around for an Uber out here in Atlanta because, you know, I don't, I don't like waiting around for no damn Uber out here. Because, you know, you don't never know what pull up on you. Yo, recommend a good driving service out here, guys, in Atlanta. Y'all hit me up. Um, what's up, Adonis? Let me get Adonis on here. Because, yeah, I don't I don't want to order an Uber. Then, yes, Giselle pull up on my ass. Um, what's up, Adonis? <laughs> so, um, when I was in... Um, like, cheer camp in Texas, when I was there and eventually like you know i'm gay it targeted me um and i think it was you know because i seemed vulnerable and yeah i guess you could say he you know was dating me like i was 16 um he was almost 30 but we were like dating and then during that like courtship process he kept like making things more extreme and just like watching like this jeffrey dahmer thing like it kind of like reminded me of him like how he would like manipulate the guys and stuff. And um, he would like do stuff I didn't want. Like he'd like, you know, leave me like tied up and like make me wear stuff under my clothes, like chains and stuff, um, like to make it like where he was like dominant over me. But it, like I started realizing I was in a bad space because he started controlling me. Um, like he had passwords to my phone. He wouldn't let me go home. He would lock me um, in places and stuff. Um, but like, it's just, he just really confused me. And that's what that show, that um, Netflix series reminds me of. And now, um, you growing up, did you grow up with your biological mother and father? Yeah. Now, 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 what happened? And 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 again, we you've been on some of these spaces, and you know the word is that you only date white men, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's not like um, a, I only do it. Like that's just what I'm primarily attracted to. Okay. Um, again, that's a form of that Stockholm syndrome. You see these people, these white men abusing you, and you're still attracted to it. So, what is it about you that felt like you deserve to be humiliated by white men like that? I'm not sure. I think I have, you know, like I may have some issues, but um, 
but they didn't do anything. Like in the movie, like they, they keep telling them what's happening. And like when I tried to get help, they basically just shut me down. Like, cause it was, they didn't want any part of it, even though I was underage. Who, who, who your parents or who? The administration, the people that were over oh. the cheer camp and stuff. Like I never told my parents, but they didn't do anything to help me. Now, why did your parents send you to cheer camp? Because I was like really into cheerleading at that time. Oh, okay. Now, when did you come out as a child? When? How old were you when you came out? Um, about like twelve. Twelve o'clock. Okay. Did anybody do um, do anything sexual to you when you were a kid? Yes. Okay. Was it a white man? Yes. Um, what a school teacher, a priest, who was it? Um, it was another guy. Like I was dating. Like he was, you know, over eighteen, and I was like younger. But... How did he get access to you? School. Uh, okay. If, if, now how, now how old were you at the time? I was very young. Like how old? Like I don't really want to talk about it too much, but no, no, we're not trying to get. No, we're just trying to get a general understanding. We're not trying to relive any type of traumatic things. We're just trying to get an understanding. I just wanted to know. Like I was uh, young. You were young, and he was over eighteen. Yeah. Like he so was. I a person like that I was supposed to be able to trust and stuff. Like it wasn't like he didn't like, we didn't like, I wasn't raped, but I was, you know, touched and he exposed himself to me on purpose. That's rape. Man. That, that's the, that's a form of rape, dude. That's a form of rape that, that, that traumatized you. Um, your parents didn't know about that. that I, Cause I just want to know how, how was he able to get access to you and where were your parents? I was, I was usually like, like I was pretty wild. Like I was into a lot of different activities and like go to like friends' houses and stuff. But like pretty much your parents, like my parents weren't really there much. Like they, you know, dealt with their own stuff. Uh, were they together, your parents? Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, married, but like, this isn't stuff like I talked to them about. Like, it's like a, like, they don't want to hear about any gay shit like that. Like they're, okay. my dad doesn't like that. Hold um, on, don't down. talk to him about it. Hold on. Is your which one of your parents is white? Neither. So both of your parents are black. Yeah. Okay, because you're very light skinned. How are you so light and both of your parents black? I mean, it happens, but you know. Oh, well, announce where you at, bro. I'm here. Okay. Now, where are your where's your parents from? Where are your parents from? Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, I'm just saying, like, why? Why would they allow all of these people to have access to you, a black child? That's something that most FBA parents kind of know better than to give their child too much access to white people like that. So well, where I live, it's a majority white area. So all the schools, like when I was in school, like I was one of the only like black students. And then like towards the end, they started like bringing in more black students because I guess they gave out like voucher vouchers or something. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it was it's just primarily white people where I'm from. OK, OK, I'm, I'm, uh, there's some there's a missing piece here. Something ain't making no sense. Just, you know, I, I'm I'm just trying to figure out what was going on with these parents. And why were they allowing you to just run around as a child like this, where people could have access to you? I, that I need, I need the missing piece to that right there. I so, mean, like that's that's just normal. Like I'd always like spend oh. the night at like other like people's friends, and like they'd you know be white families and stuff, and you know go vacations and stuff with white people. Like that's that was oh. normal. For me. Okay, that's that's not normal for foundational Black American families to do. We kind of know not to let the kids do no shit like that. Are your family, are they FBAs? Yeah, I've sent you my paperwork. Okay, I, okay. That's weird. Were, you, were any of them on crack? Were your parents on crack? <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, something ain't right, man. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Something ain't right, man. There's something missing. We don't usually do that, man. There's something going on there. We, we, we don't sit there and let our kids go on vacation with white people like no we, we don't do that i don't know what's going on with that because we know what will happen we know that's a no-no and we see what happened to you so yeah as a father of black children i'm like what the hell who i'm who? sorry yeah okay oh no 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 bro. i'm just trying to you know we're not blaming you we're not blaming you we're not blaming you we're not blaming your family i just we want to 
create a preventative scenario so that people can look at your situation and not um, fall for the same things so that people would not be, um, you know, put in the same situation that we want this to be something that people can learn from, you know, but yeah, man, we, we more power to you, man. We hope you get strength and healing. You know, what, what happened to you as, as a child was very unfair. It should not have happened to you and you don't deserve it. You did deserve it. You don't deserve um, people mistreating you now. You understand? Because uh, what you, when you were a kid, you didn't have any power. You didn't have any control over what people could do to you because you were a vulnerable person. But now you can control the way you react to that. You understand? Yes, sir. Thank you, hey, my man. Yeah, you be good, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm compassionate with the brother. Yeah, I'm not beating up on the brother because that's traumatic. You know, kids getting touched on. I don't want to play that type of shit. That ain't cool at all. But, but I want black parents to. And I, I've said this many times. You don't let your kid in white people's houses by themselves. Fuck that. I say that loud and proud. You don't let them in white people's houses by themselves. That's kind of a known thing. That's kind of an unwritten rule in FBA society. Yeah. What you think is going to happen? Let me tell y'all something. Let's, let's keep it a buck. In, found, in, in, in white supremacist society... When a black person is in a white person's home, you are in a very, very vulnerable position because in white supremacist society, they have the right to do anything to you in their home. There's a real big thing about that. When, a, when you are in a white person's home, they have the right from the dominant society to do damn near anything to you. I talked about this before. It's that castle doctrine mentality. You got to be very cautious going up into white people's homes or suspected white supremacist homes. And you damn sure don't let your kids up in there. Let's look at the Jeffrey Dahmer situation. Like I said, they knew what Jeffrey Dahmer was doing with those black people in that house of his. In his apartment, they knew what Jeffrey was doing. They were taking victims up there to Jeffrey Dahmer's crib. Before they do anything to a white person who's harmed black people in their home, 30 or 40 bodies have to rack up. They have to wait till about 20, 30, 40 bodies are pulled out the house before they actually do something about it. That's a real weird rule in white supremacist society. You can do anything to a black person if they are in your home. That's why when we see children, black children being adopted, is always some weird stuff happening in them homes, and they don't never do anything about it. They don't never bring the children out of there. They don't ever save the children. Like with the Hart family, Deontay Hart, the, the, the little boy who was out there hugging the police, those white women had them kids, them black kids in that house abusing the hell out of them. And then when the word got out and they were about to do an investigation. The, the white women went and killed themselves and the babies. Dude, when you get up in these folks' homes, it's like vampires, man. You know, you don't ever go into a vampire's house. The white supremacists are vampires. You are very careful when you go in their homes and you don't let your children go in there, especially by themselves. It don't ever turn out good. You think? That's just what it is. Sleepovers? You don't let your kid have no sleepover at nobody's, no suspected white supremacist's house. You don't let no black kid have no sleepover? No. And if you go to birthday parties or whatever, you take a, a, an adult chaperone. You take somebody who's an adult. You don't never leave a black kid alone with these folks, man. Because if they do something to the kid, who's going to punish the white people? Nobody's going to punish them. Nobody. That's why. That's why you don't do it. Even if there's some innocent people, still, I'm not going to risk it. Because if they do decide to do something janky to a black child, nobody's going to punish them. So, yeah, you just don't risk that. Let's get some more people in here. All right, we've got a lot of folks in here. Uh, how many people we got in here? Okay. Oh, uh, let's get, um, let me see. I'll get one more person because I got stuff to do today. 
Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Raise your hand, guys. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Raise your hand if your microphone is ready. Raise your hand if your microphone is ready right now. T.S. Giselle. Um, no, ma'am. All right. Let's get um. Let's get Black Rhino. I think that's your name. Black. Hop on, brother. Black Rhino, hop on. What's up, man? Um, Netflix. I don't even got Netflix, bro. So what you doing is needed because you is telling people, you bringing awareness in the community. And I feel like we should take that a step further, bro. Like, I feel like we got the technology out here to protect ourselves. Like, to be our own police in the community and pay people that's watching out for each other, that's watching out and responding to different things. Yes, indeed. I agree. I agree. And you have some people, I know there's some brothers out there who kind of patrol the streets in Detroit um, and other places, but we got to watch that because what happens is when we start to try to patrol the neighborhoods um, openly, a lot of times they'll put an agent in there. They did that with the Black Panthers. They'll put agents in there and then the agents will start doing real funny style stuff. They'll start burning buildings down. So we have to always keep our eyes on the white supremacists. We always got to keep our eyes on them and what they're doing because we, we can get it together if we want to. But the thing is, we have this bigger power behind us that's going to try to sabotage it. So you never take your eyes off the white supremacists family. You never take your eyes off them. All right. Anyway, let me get up out of here. I might come back on later um, later on today, but I got stuff to do out here in Atlanta. Again, y'all let me know what malls to go to out here. I want to go to some um, malls that have player stuff. Um, no hoochie daddy shit. You know, something with some player stuff in it that I can get. So y'all let me know what malls are going out here. Um, Linux. Is Linux good? I know Linux was going through some things for a minute. And first there was a lot of moisture. Then there was niggas getting shot at Linux. So is Linux okay? Should I stay away from the Linux mall, ladies and gentlemen? Atlanta, talk to me. Um, what malls are popping out here? Y'all DM me. Let me know what's going on. Y'all be good. Papi Akute, Lolo Vuve to the family. Peace. <laughs>